Look, I've been a big proponent that I don't think AI is going to be replacing software engineers or anything like that anytime soon. However, I do think AI can be an incredible tool for us as software engineers to become more efficient. So it's not necessarily about AI replacing software engineers as much as it's just about AI assisting software engineers and letting us focus more on the things that we do best. And that's exactly what I want to talk about in this video sponsored by Locify. So Locify is an AI tool and it's able to take a Figma design, so sort of the most common type of design we get as front-end developers, and it's able to convert that design into actual front-end code. And again, it's not trying to replace software engineers. It's just an assistance to software engineers. So it's not doing absolutely everything. It's just generating some of that UI code for us. And then we can go in and manually implement all of that business logic. And I know that sounds like a lot, but let me show you how exactly this works because it is pretty cool. So here is a design. So we can see down here, we have this homepage for this thing called GigHub. So it's sort of like a freelancer marketplace. And this is the homepage. And then we have this create a brief pop-up. So if you click this create a brief button, it would open up this pop-up. And then over here, we also have the product description page. And then up here at the top, we also have some components. So these are some reusable components that actually already exist. So these components are in a GitHub repository. And one thing that's really cool about Locify is it's able to use that GitHub repository. So it's going to use these components that we've already created in that code that it generates. Okay, so now to actually use the Locify plugin, what we want to do is to select the pages that we are actually generating. So that's these three. So we're not going to select the components. So I'll come over here and just select the different layers. And then I'm going to come over to this Locify Lightning plugin. If you don't have this open, if you have it installed, you can right click and go to plugins or there's a bunch of other ways in Figma to open up the plugin, but we'll open up Locify Lightning. You can see we have two options, Locify Lightning and Locify Classic. So Classic is going to be more step-by-step. -step. It gives you a lot more options, but Locify Lightning I think is the way to go right now. And this is what we're going to be doing in this video. So essentially Locify Lightning is able to take your Figma design and convert it into actual front end code with just one step. And it does this using what they call the Loco AI, which is a large design model. So rather than an LLM, a large language model, this is a large design model that they've trained on millions of designs and web products. So we're going to click convert to code and this is going to take a bit of time, but what it's going to do is first of all, run this design optimizer. So essentially this is adding auto layout and flex to your designs. And it's optimizing just the overall layout structure of your design. And then it's going to go to the tagging step. So this is converting your static layers to interactive elements. So for example, just recognizing, hey, this thing is an input and this thing is a button. And then it's going to work on responsiveness. So just to make sure that your design is actually working with essentially different screen sizes. So it's adding media queries and things like that. And then in this action step, Locify essentially just going to respect the Figma prototype actions. So where in Figma you've said, hey, if you click this button, it should open this other page. Locify is going to respect that and make sure it's reflected in the code. And then finally, we have the layer names and then the code components and props. So it's going to generate all of the final components for us. And now this is, like I said, going to take a bit of time, but I'll check back in when it's done. All right, so that took a minute or two. And now we do have our preview as well as our code. So I can pull this up and you can see it actually generated a bunch of different components for us. So we can see it sort of broken down into components and we have all of our code. One thing I do like a lot about this too is that it actually uses proper semantic tags. So we don't just have a bunch of divs that are going to be horrible for accessibility. We have things like main and section and the correct heading tags, so H2s and H1s. And these little details are super important to making sure that our code is actually accessible. So it's super cool to see that it's doing that for us. Another cool point is that it does recognize when things are reusable, but when there's sort of small differences between those, and it understands how to take those small differences and to make them props in the code. So for example, if I scroll down here, you can see we have this card with CTA and there's multiple of them, but they have different props. So it knows that these are sort of the same thing, but they have different images and titles based on which individual card this actually is. And then of course we do have our preview as well. So I'm going to close this and you can see we have the preview. And what's important here is that one, it's actually interactive. So you can see, for example, we have these hover effects. I can come up here and I can actually type something into this text box. So the typing and all of these things are actually hooked up. So it's actually handled that for us. And an important note here is that this is actually a live preview running on live code. So this isn't just running the Figma design. This is actual live code that's been generated and is running for us. And in addition to that, it's going to be responsive. So we can have this working 
on our big desktop computers, but it's also going to work on smaller devices like tablets and phones. And we can see the whole thing is going to be responsive. So it's done all of this for us. All right, but now what I want to do is let's go back to the full size here. And what we can actually do is come over here and we can review different decisions that Locify made. So we don't just have to take what the AI gave us and assume it's perfect because ultimately it's AI and it's not going to be perfect. And Locify is great for this because it does allow us to review any and all of the decisions it actually made. So let's go down to the code components first, click review, and you can see here we have the different components that we actually gave it. So these are the ones that came from GitHub. So we can see we have our header, we have this filter type. So these are these here. We have the gig cards, which are these down here. But then we can also go to the components generated by Locify. So for example, this is that card with CTA we saw. We can see there are two of them. So we have this one here and this one here, and they are differentiated by the props. So we can see two instances, seven props. So we can come in here and see all of the different props that it generated and how that allows us to have these two different instances doing similar things, but different. And I think what's really cool here is this isn't a component that we told Locify about. It was just able to look at the design and say, hey, these two things are pretty similar. So maybe we need a reusable component here and it was able to generate that for us. And of course, if we wanted to, we could change the names of these props and all of those different types of things. But for now, I will just go back. And again, we can see all of the different components that it actually generated. Additionally, if there's something you think Locify missed and you want to create your own component, you can come up here to create components. We could select whatever we wanted. So maybe we want this content section to be a component and we can click create and then create here and it would do that for us. And okay, let's go ahead and click done here and I will go back to this sort of code components page and back all the way to the beginning. And now I do want to emphasize again, Locify is not going to be perfect in the same way that no AI, at least at this point, is going to be perfect. But what it does very well is it does allow you to sort of audit the decisions it's made. So for example, if we look at this responsiveness, you can see the sort of buttons here are center aligned and that's a little bit odd. They should probably be left aligned. So what we can do is we can come into here and go to review the styling and responsiveness. And what I'm going to do is select our card with CTA and then I'm going to click edit and we can come down here and you can see the flex alignment is centered. So let's just left align that and then click save and done. And sometimes it can take a moment, but now you can see these are left aligned and I can make this the full size again and it is still going to work as we expect. And now of course we do have three different pages we generated and we've mostly been looking at this main page, but we can come over here to select the different pages or frames as they're actually called. And we can make sure that these things are working as well. So for example, here we can enter some title and then you'll see, well, actually this description isn't working. So that's again, something that we need to audit Locify on. So what I'm going to do is come over here to tagging because we need to say, hey, this is actually a text area. So we're going to review the tagging and we need to again, say that this is a text area. So I'm going to say tag more because it just missed this tag. And then we can simply select this text area, come down here and say, this is a text area and it's going to reload. And we could also add things like a placeholder. So maybe enter a description, click done here. And you'll see we now have enter a description as well as this does actually work. And then you can see the attach files component is also working. Okay, so let's say we are done with this and let's look at the final frame. So we can come over to this one. So this is that product page and we can see it actually looks pretty good. This seems to be working pretty well and everything looks pretty good to me. We can check the responsiveness as well if we want. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Of course, if you wanted to, you could do some more review here, but for our purposes for this video, let's go ahead and say this is good to go. So what we can do now is we can come down to this sync to builder button. I'm going to click on that. And you'll see this is where essentially we sync to GitHub to actually create our final code that we can go in and add all of our other business logic that we might need. So it's going to ask us a few things. For example, we have React with TypeScript selected, which I think is going to be fine. We can select what the starting screen is going to be. Make sure that this pop-up is a single component because it's not a full page. And these two are pages. And I'll click Sync to Builder. And this, again, is going to take a bit of time. And I'll check back in once it's done. All right, so now this opens up this new tab for the Locify Builder. And this is one of my favorite parts about this. So over here, we have a sort of sidebar. And the first thing to do is go to the File Explorer. And this is going to be essentially just our code. 
So we can see all of the code it generated. I'll make this a bit bigger so it's easier for you all to see. And I can come over here and change all of these settings about our project. So maybe I want to switch from TypeScript to JavaScript or from Vite to Create React App. Or maybe instead of CSS modules, I want to use Tailwind. So let's switch to that, click Save. You'll see it takes a few seconds, but it's going to convert this to using Tailwind. So now we have all of these Tailwind classes. And of course, if I decide maybe I don't want that, I could go back to CSS modules. Let's add CSS variables in as well. And we could change all these other things if we want. But for now, I will just save this to go back to what we had. And there is a lot more that you can do here. But for now, what I want to do is come over to the next tab, which is the layer panel. So this is somewhat similar to what we saw before. So we can select different layers. So for example, this header, and you'll see it's going to select it here and it's going to select it in our code. So it's going to show us where exactly this is in the code. It's even highlighting it in the CSS for us. And of course we can select all of the different components and you'll see all of this sort of changing. So for example, if I click here, this is the card with CTA. And you can even see all of the different props for this card. And then again, of course, it opened up the card with CTA TSX file. So the React file, as well as the card with CTA module.css file. So the CSS file for this particular card. And again, this preview, just like we saw in Figma, is going to be a fully functional preview, and we can also go between the different pages if we need to. And with this preview, not only is it fully functional, but it also is going to be responsive. So I could just choose a different screen size up here, or I can simply drag it like we could do in Figma as well to make sure that all of the responsiveness is fully working. And if you want to take this even one step further, you can click the view prototype, which is going to sort of full screen this prototype, and you can actually share this. So I can click share prototype, and I can have a link that is just a public link that I can share with my team. So if I'm working with different people, maybe I'm working with the designers who made that Figma file, I can click this, send it to them, and they can just go quickly through and review it and make sure that everything is exactly like they expected it to be. Okay, what I want to do now is go back to the builder. And again, we have all of this capability to do lots of different editing, a lot of these same editing that we could do in Figma, we could do here, and we can just see all of the different components, we can bind data. But what I want to do next is actually sync over to GitHub. So let's click sync export or deploy. And this gives us a lot of different options. So we could just straight up deploy it. We could also export it in different ways. But what I'm going to do is sync with GitHub and click sync project. This is going to open up this new panel. So we can see I already have my GitHub account connected. So I'm going to click new repository, but we could also push to an existing repository, give it a name. So for example, locify dash demo, and then it's going to push to the main branch by default because we don't have any branches yet. I'll click confirm repo and branch. It's going to give me a diff so we could see what we're changing. But of course, this is a new repository, so there's not a whole lot to review here. So let's just click push to GitHub. And this is going to take a bit of time as well, but it's going to push everything over to GitHub. Then we can clone that repository and use it in VS Code just like any other code. All right, so now we can see it generated for me this GitHub repository, and it also has some instructions. So open the project folder in VS Code, run npm install, and npm start. And then we could, if we want, go through all of the different code. But what I'm going to do is simply clone this into VS Code. So I'm going to come here and copy this to clone with SSH. All right, so now I'm over here in VS Code and all I'm going to do is say git clone and then what I copied there and it's going to clone our Locify demo. So just like that, I can have the Locify demo open in VS Code and you can see we have all of that same code. Now, one thing to note here is it is going to be missing some components being the components that we had already built. So the ones we had in another repository, there's a few ways to get them into this repository, but one of the easiest is simply to just open up that folder and copy them over. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drag them into here. And now we should have all of our components and we simply need to do npm install to go ahead and install all of the dependencies. And then once that finishes, we can simply run npm start and it is going to start our code on localhost 5173. And with that, you should be able to get everything running pretty quickly, depending on your project. Again, AI is not perfect. So there might be some small changes you need to make to get everything to run perfectly, but you should have everything running. So we can see this is our website and it is going to work just like it worked in the preview. And I could even use the interactivity. So we can say create a brief and you can see it opens up this let's create a brief pop-up that we had. And once again, this is all going to be interactive. And of course we can close this as well. And now the final thing I wanted to show is that you can actually make changes in Locify and it's going to update the GitHub repository for you even after we maybe wrote some other code. So maybe we've added some business logic and the design team is like, hey, we didn't like this thing we did. We updated the design. You can actually just use that updated design 
design. So for example, let's come back to Figma. And what I'm going to do is, first of all, let's just move this over. Actually, let's just X out of it completely. And let's say in our design, maybe we wanted to delete something. So maybe we didn't want to have this last box down here. So what I'm going to do is just select this box down here. And let's say we just wanted to delete it. Well, now this is different than what we have in Locify. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and select these again, and I will go back into Locify Lightning. You can see this is going to open up and we have our code. So let's click view code to bring this back up. It's going to take a little bit less time than before. Now you can see here, Locify actually figured out the things that have changed and we can click generate code here. And it's going to take a little bit of time again to finish generating. And once that finishes, you get this preview again, and we can see it is going to have that change. And if we want to push this to GitHub, I can just click sync to GitHub down here, and it's going to update our GitHub for us. So it's going to generate a diff for us and just push that to GitHub as if it's just another coder working in our repository. And here's that diff page. So we can see what we had before and let's go to changes only. We can see these are where the actual changes are. I'm just going to go ahead and click push to GitHub. It's going to push it to GitHub for us. But of course we could go through here and review all of it if we actually wanted to. So now if I come back to GitHub, you can see there are now three commits and there's this new commit that was pushed from Locify Builder. So this is super powerful just because it allows you to have the design and very quickly take the design to basic code. And then you can work on that business logic, do all of the things that we as developers actually do well. And then if the design team comes back and they're like, hey, we didn't actually like this thing. We want to move it around or something. They can do that. And Locify can automatically generate that change for them rather than you having to do that. And again, that means that you as a developer get to focus on what you actually do best. And really that's what I like about Locify is that it doesn't claim to be something it's not. It's not claiming to replace software engineers. It's just a great tool for assisting us at our jobs. So Locify is coming out of beta in early September. If you do want to give it a try, there's a link at the top of the description.